Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us for our time of spiritual transformation. Today is Thursday, February 11th. It is so good to be with you. I thank you for just making time every single day just to come together where we can just take a step back and listen. What is God saying? What is God doing? And how can that transform our lives? I'm so excited today. Today, I have Ann White with me with Courage for Life. Let me tell you a little bit, a little bit about Anne. She is internationally known author, speaker, passionate Bible teacher, and creator of the first fully female voiced NLT audio Bible. She founded her global ministry, Courage for Life, out of a calling to share with others how God and His Word brought healing and restoration to her life. For years, Anne's heart has been a burden for those who are victims of trauma, neglect, and abuse. Courage for Life exists to help people of all walks of life learn to embrace their God-given courage to pursue their God-given dreams. And this is going to be just such a rich, rich time together. Her topic today is Courageous Character That Captivates. And thank you for being with us. Tell us a little bit more about what God's saying to you and through you during this season. Well, Eric, thank you so much for having me. And, you know, it's just been on my heart lately um, and really for over a, well over a year now, the climate, the climate that our culture is in and, um, you know, what a lot of us are facing right now. And many of us have fears, you know, related to the pandemic or related to things that are going on in our cities and all around us. Um, and so I really have been burdened about Christ-like characteristics. And I just love the passage in Philippians um, 2, 1 through 11, when, when Paul, you know, because he's in prison, this is his first imprisonment in uh, Rome, and he's writing to the Philippian church, one of the first church plants that he had in uh, Europe. And he covers in that particular letter, and I love that letter, he covers three predominant themes and he talks about suffering, he talks about fellowship, and he talks about the gospel. And those are three such important um, mm -hmm. topics that all of us as Christians really need to be focused on during these times. Amen. Amen. So, um, so if you want me to go ahead, I'll get started. Please, on no, please tell us a little bit. Character that captivates. And the reason that I titled it that is because I think we need to have courage in our character. We've, you know, in a, in a climate where there are many unbelievers that surround us, they um, can be very vocal and they can be very condescending. Uh, it takes a lot of courage, you know, to stand up in a crowd sometimes and speak our faith and to do it in a loving and caring mm -hmm. way. And that's the part that captivates. Yes. When we stand up for our faith and God calls us to do so, to stand firm, we need to stand in truth and love. And that is the component that really captivates people because when they see us, they say, you know, there's something different. We've always heard that, that, you know, others will recognize Christ living in and through us. And that's what this passage is all about. So I want to read it and I'm reading from the NLT because uh, that's our partnership and our passion because we work with um, the at-risk population and the New Living Translation is a great translation. Um, and, and more of a modern English translation. Mm. So I love working in the NLT. But Philippians 2, 1 through 11 tells us to have the same attitude that Christ has. And in the first two verses in um, Philippians 2, 1 through 2, we see five components, five um, incentives, I might say, that we receive at, from the Holy Spirit, when we pray and surrender our life to Christ, we receive these five components of our faith. And so it says, is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ, any comfort from his love, mm -hmm. any fellowship together in his spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another and working together with one mind and purpose. I think now more than ever, Eric, it's 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 so critically important for us to come together as the body of Christ, mm. to set aside those minute differences that many of us have that really d deal with more denominational type issues, and for us to be of one mind, and that's the mind of Christ. And so these characteristics, encouragement, comfort, fellowship, and tender hearts, and that compassion, we receive that at salvation from the Holy Spirit. Mm. 
And so it gives us the ability to be, be Christ-like people, you know, and to right. pursue that Christ-like characteristic. So the rest of the verses, three through five, tell us how to live according to that spirit. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take the interest, um, take an interest in others. You must have the same attitude as Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he didn't think equality with God was something to cling to. And I find that pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took a humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. That to me is really humbling, even mm -hmm. just that, that comment. Another passage um, that I like that really relates to this is also in 1 Peter 3, 8 through 12. And I think, you know, if you'll just take a note of that and go back and read that later on, this is where Peter is calling, calling um, Christians to respond with Christ-like characteristics as well. And in the first verse that I quoted, that um, chapter 3, verse 8, he's talking to believers. He said, finally, all of you should be of one mind, sympathize mm -hmm. with each other, love each other as brothers and sisters, be tender hearted and keep a humble attitude. And that's how we are to, to respond to our brothers and sisters in Christ. And then in verses nine through 12, he talks to us about how we should respond to unbelievers. And he says, don't repay evil for evil. Mm. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. That is what God has called you to do, and he will grant you his blessings. For the scriptures say, if you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. So again, just another, you know, confirmation that we are to pursue these Christ-like characteristics, especially yeah. in the culture in which we live. Yeah, that's so good. I, every time you kept, the thing that just kept coming back to me was this humility, this need for being more humble. Um, I think that's the, that's the thing I feel like even, humility would probably solve a lot of issues that we have right now. A lot of things that are going on. If we were more humble, even in approaching someone that disagrees with us, just that, hey, I want to hear what you have to say. Because one of the things that we know is no one ever listens when they feel talked over, right. but they'll listen when they feel heard. Mm -hmm. And the only way to, to allow people to feel heard is to approach them with humility. So I just, there, there is a courage element to that. But the thing that just kept all the words you kept using with the two things that jumped out were humility and this idea of one mind. And I love what you said about a lot of the denominational issues. I think today, with the importance of our faith, the one thing that we can do is let go a lot of the minor things and just focus on the major, which is Jesus Christ and his love for us. And then being that love and that hands and feet to other people. That's Absolutely. You know, many of us are going to church virtually now still. Um, many of us are, are back in our churches. And, you know, with Courage for Life, we, we work with the at-risk population. We work with um, women and God has even opened the doors for us and our ministry um, through our biblically based mental health curriculum to begin working with incarcerated men. So we've got a team um, from a men's prison ministry that is facilitating our curriculum um, here pretty soon, starting in the next couple of months in men's facilities as well, because our states are begging yeah. for this curriculum. And so bottom line is, I guess what I'm saying is that so many times we see, now we know that church and the Christian population should be the safest place for a broken sinner to go. But what we find so many times in our women that we work with is they're so wounded and they've been wounded by even Christians. Mm -hmm. You know, they feel, they feel judged, rejected and turned away. And that's not Christ-like. Right. This is such an important period in our lives. There are two, over 2.2 million people incarcerated in the United States today. 
Mm. And on average, 600,000 rotate in and out of those jail and prison doors every single year. This is an unreached population, um, pretty much. I mean, there are, there are certainly incredible prison ministries that are going in, and ours is one of them. Um, and we're doing all we can. But I just implore listeners uh, to not only pray for these people who are suffering even more than normal. Now, have they have they um, earned the right to be there in almost all cases, absolutely, you know, unless they were falsely accused or imprisoned, but they have, but if you look back at the trauma and the hurt and the pain in their life, 95% of them were acting out from previous childhood trauma. Mm -hmm. And so if we can come in and that's one of courage for life's passions. If we can come in and share the love of Christ with them in a humble and loving way and lead them into the arms of, of our Lord, who, who does not judge, there is no condemnation in Christ right. Jesus. And so if we're going to be Christ-like, we need to be the same way. I love that. I, again, I keep getting this echo of humility. We would understand the perspective of their previous hurts and traumas that have brought them to where they are if we approach that with humility and love that ah that's something i'm going to have to meditate on and so that's today that's a today if you will just type in hashtag humility that's what i'm going to type in that's what we're focusing on is humility today but humility too from a christ-like standpoint a humility to see with the eyes of jesus those that are around us to see the pain to see the trauma that they've gone through and love them with that same love that's, that's what i'm taking away from today and thank you would you pray for us before we finish up today? Oh, I would love to pray for us today. Thank, thank you. you. Father, thank you for the privilege and honor for all of us to come together, Lord, and uh, to hear from you, to hear a word from you. Thank mm. you for your word, God, uh, that goes before us and that guides and directs our path, that encourages us and gives us hope, Lord. Um, help us to honor and preserve your word and to share it with others, Lord. Help us to be strong and courageous as we go forth each day, Lord, standing firm in our faith and speaking truth and love to others who are so desperate to hear of you, about you, and to receive you, Lord. Uh, God, may we be that beacon of light um, shining in a dark and wicked world, God. Just give us the privilege and opportunity, Lord. We want to serve you. Um, you tell us, Father, that um, in Galatians 2.20, Lord, you tell us that you live in and through us. It is no longer us that live, but God, you mm -hmm. live in and through us. When we receive you and the Holy Spirit takes up residence in our bodies, we walk in the power and the strength and the courage of our Lord and Savior and our Holy Spirit. So Lord, Lord, thank you. I just humbly am grateful and I'm grateful for this privilege and opportunity um, to share your word with others, God. May your word go out and, and as you always say, it will never return void. We're, Lord, we love you. We praise you for all you've done and all you are doing in our country, in our nation, and in our own personal lives. In Jesus' precious and holy name, we pray. Amen. 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 And You've talked about this ministry of yours, Courage for Life and everything. If especially the listeners want to know more, where should they go find out more and kind of dig a little bit deeper into what you guys are doing? Oh, there's two perfect ways to go. Number one, you can go to courageforlife.org and find out more about our ministry. We have great resources there that are for everyone. Um, mm -hmm. We don't just work with the at-risk population. We have a lot of great resources for um, Christians of all walks of life. And one of our primary um, which is an incredible project that we've done, uh, is the all-female voiced audio Bible. It's an incredible listening tool. You can find it on your Android or Apple um, device in the App Store, and you just look for Courage for Life Bible or CFL Bible. Download it for free and, and start listening today. It's, it is truly a great tool, and matter of fact, God has been so great uh, that he's allowing us to begin the recording of this in Spanish as well. So oh, wow. our recording for the all-female voice Spanish audio Bible <laughs> begins in the next 30 days. So we could not be more excited. Um, this is reaching into the prisons. In Georgia alone, we have over 53,000 inmates, you know, that have the ability to upload, and over 30,000 of them have uploaded them to their tablets. So this is men and women, and what we are finding is that 
in the recording that we did, it's not dramatized. It's just loving, kind voices of women from all walks of life, different age group, ethnic backgrounds, but clear English speaking voices. But it would be like having your best friend, your grandmother, your aunt, someone that you love, your sister, reading to you God's word. And mm. the inmates and at-risk population and people of all walks of life are downloading this free app so that they can listen to the Bible in their daily life. You know, it just helps take God's word with you everywhere you go. I love that. I love that. And thank you so much for making time for us today. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Um, thank you everyone who's been listening today for joining us for our prayer time. We'll be back again next week. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.